Ooh. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and Marvel's Phase 4 is easily the biggest phase that people have yet. Um, currently consisting of 12 movies and 12 TV shows, a special um, it's, there's a lot um, and one of the big parts that um, seems to be being introduced um, quite heavily in a lot of those properties early on is um, expanding the multiverse uh, so we're gonna sort of have a look at exactly how the multiverse is being explored in those 25 properties that we're going to be getting over the next two, three or more years. Um, so yeah, we're going to start with the films. Um, now our 12 films are Black Widow, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, Eternals, uh, Spider-Man No Way Home, those are this year, Doctor Strange and Multiverse of Madness, Thor Love and Thunder, Black Panther 2, Captain Marvel 2, that's next year, and then 2023 and beyond, um, Guardians Volume 3, Ant-Man and Lost Mania, Blade, and Fantastic Four. Um, now, a lot of those, right off the bat, can, can help with that. We know the Eternals is going to help set up the past, um, and we also know that easily one of the more more powerful and more notable British heroes in Black Knight is going to be in that. Um, we know that Captain Britain, the other sort of main notable one, is being set up. His sister is um, Psylocke, who is a mutant, and you know the X Men are eventually going to be coming. Um, so, and that also goes back to For the Dark World, where we discovered that there's a concentration of cosmic energy centered on Greenwich in England. Um, in the comics, Captain Britain derives his powers from a power matrix centered on England. Um, that power matrix has been set up. Um, radix has been spoken about where we're gonna get uh, Red Guardian who rushes Captain America um, wouldn't be so hard to imagine that we're gonna get um, a Captain Britain soon um, that power matrix uh, exploring that um, Spider-Man No Way Home is a easiest way to put that is a live action into the Spider-Verse um, Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness, it's literally in the title. Um, Ant Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania, Fantastic Four, both of those titles dealing with. Uh, well, we know that um, Kang's going to be the villain for Quantum Mania, um, and the Fantastic Four originally get their powers from the Negative Zone, which is another dimension, um, which is sort of part of that multiverse that we're talking about um the, the only film that we know is coming that hasn't actually that isn't actually listed as part of phase four is deadpool 3 we know it's coming we know ryan rounds is keeping to that which means that his side of the thing we have to wait till we see what that movie is and how it decides to tie in his continuity to the mcu and whether it's going to be a reboot or a retcon or what. Um, but he can he, he can see through the fourth wall. He's aware that he's a comic book character or in a movie or whatever. He can talk to the audience. So he's aware, like cosmically, that there are other dimensions and universes outside of his own and he's able to communicate with them. Um, which, when you word it like that, really does make him quite a powerful character. Um, even if he does use it purely just to entertain people. Um, and 
then obviously we've got things like Guardians of the Galaxy and Captain Marvel and Thor Love and Thunder, um, which is exploring the cosmos within um, Earth-19999. Um, which really only leaves us with um, Black Panther, Shang-Chi and Black Widow, which are just exploring Earth, and even then Black Widow's um, set within the Infinity Saga itself. Um, so there's not actually a whole heap of actually exploring what happened on Earth post blip. We are looking very cosmic phase, um, whether that's simple space or whether it's weird space and other dimensions and and that sort of thing. Um, the TV shows, obviously One Division, she has the ability to create her own pocket dimensions um, that sort of occupy a physical space. Um, uh, Loki's literally looking at other timelines, which is sort of each timeline would be its own universe within the MCU. Um, the What If series is coming. It's going to be an animated one, and there is a theory going around that it's going to be sort of the testing ground for some ideas that they're not sure how to implement in the MCU yet. Um, but in keeping with the spirit of the What If comics, they'll just throw out these ridiculous ideas and if audiences respond well to them they will put them on the drawing board for the potential film ideas um, further down the road. Um, for instance, it was a What If comic that originally had What If Hulk had the brain of Bruce Banner. Um, it was well received and well, you know, a couple of years later we get the Professor Hulk iteration of the character. Um, so that could be what the What If is doing. Um, and then a whole heap of the, the rest of those shows really just seem like they're either setting up um, something like the Midnight Suns with uh, Moon Knight, we're also getting the Blade uh, movie as well. Uh, between those two, you add in a character like um, Ghost Rider, who has been sort of being talked about as far as he might be being brought in. Um, I do know that uh, Keanu Reeves was just at one point considered for that. I also heard of a thing that maybe they were just going to bring back Nick Cage. I'm fine with either of those castings. Um, the original Ghost Rider film with Nick Cage is actually one of my favourite Marvel movies of all time. Um, partly because I just love the character. Um, and I'm also a Nick Cage fan. Uh, so I would love that. Um, or they're setting up things like the Young Avengers, um, Miss Marvel, the Hawkeye series, uh, Ironheart, those sorts of things. Um, and setting up and sort of starring some of these uh, younger characters. Um, so it does look like it's going to be trying to usher in a younger age for like the earthbound stuff while at the same time exploring other corners of the universe that haven't previously been discovered like what do the other universes look like what what's the paranormal side what's the cosmic side look like what's you know um if we do end up getting Punisher and Daredevil, Jessica Jones and the other Defenders into the MCU. Um, what's that going to look like um, within the actual MCU proper rather than the weird Netflix bubble? Um, so, yeah, there's, there's a lot going on uh, and that's before we even get to the whole world that is mutants um, and as I said um, Ghost Rider has been talked about uh, Captain Britain has been talked about uh, Nova 
Namor, neither of them have been listed here. Um, both of those have been set up quite nicely. Uh, Nova through the Guardians films with the actual Nova Corps and Xandar existing. Um, and um, Namor with his little dot on the map in Iron Man 2, that, that uh, seemingly throwaway line about an earthquake at the bottom of the ocean in Endgame. Um, yeah. Um, I mean, I wouldn't, be, I wouldn't be surprised if he, if Namor ends up being the villain in Black Panther 2, and that's how they sort of introduce him into the MCU as the anti-hero that he normally is in the comics. Um, although I have also heard that it could also be Doctor Doom, um, and in that case, Sokovia could be their Latveria um, quite easily. Um, there's the whole theory about how the, car, the, the Hydra Castle, which already has Ultron drones in the basement, um, could be re-established as Castle Doom, and that that city, as it gets rebuilt, would just be Doomstart, and therefore the capital of Latveria. Um, especially if someone like Doctor Doom, with his money and his knowledge, just swooped in and helped rebuild this otherwise already poor and severely damaged because of Avengers country. Um, so, yeah, um, a lot going on. Um, but yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be an interesting one. Um, we do know that, as I said, Kang's gonna be the villain in Quantum Mania. Uh, he's also introducing um, Stinger. I, I know a lot of people know Cassie Lang as Stature, but I do, I do thoroughly believe that she'll go by Stinger, um, simply because they've been keeping to their insect theme within those movies. Um, I have also read that she's going to be dating a, a, a guy by the name of Robbie Baldwin, who, if that name doesn't instantly click in your head, he's the superhero Speedball, so he might also be a member of our Young Avengers lineup. Um, what else have we got here? Um, we might get Monica Rambeau sort of helping to oversee that as part of, like, she works for Nick Fury. And so that would be like his new Avengers initiative, like the sword. Um, yeah. There's a whole a whole host of things that could be happening. Um, Captain Marvel 2 would be cool if it introduced Hulkling. Um, just because he's otherwise not really got anywhere to show up. Um, it definitely makes more sense with her working with Skrulls um, to have Hulkling show up there, uh, and if not in Secret of a Invasion, which is a Skrull story anyway. Um, yeah, it's they're definitely they're definitely working towards um, showing off these other sides, um, and particularly with. The TV shows and being on Disney Plus, it's very easy for them to just sort of put a show on there um, that can deal with things like you know the more supernatural, paranormal stuff of the Midnight Suns, for instance, and then not not really have to release that in China because Disney Plus isn't in China. Um, and they can just sort of be like, this is a Disney Plus exclusive. Um, it's only going to be on Disney Plus. And then they can deal with things like Mephisto and the Devil, because he's kind of key to Ghost Rider's backstory. Um, so, yeah. Um, and I definitely, I definitely think that that's going to be a big part of it. Um, 
is, is going to be our Big Night Suns. Um, it could mean that we'll actually get a Man Thing movie because he's also been sort of sneaking around. Um, his wife, Ellen Brandt, was the chick that died with a cheap trick and a cheesy one liner in Iron Man 3. Uh, his face was on the Grandmaster's Tower in Ragnarok. Um, so he, he, he's out there, he's lurking around, he's already a giant swamp monster. Um, and in the comics, he actually protects the nexus of all realities. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if a nexus being like Wanda ends up teaming up with him and then Blade and Ghost Rider and Moon Knight and they would be our Midnight Suns. Um, I personally would also like to throw Elsa Bloodstone in the mix. Um, simply because she is a badass monster hunter, a la um, Van Helsing sort of thing. Um, so she'd be a monster hunter on a team of monsters um, and demons and stuff. And I think that'd be really cool to see. Um, and then obviously you'd have like whatever the Guardians of the Galaxy becomes. It's like the Cosmic Avengers, the Midnight Suns would be the Supernatural Avengers. You'd have your regular old just street heroes as you know, like like um you know, like our, our Avengers. Um and then each country could have their own as well. So we might get to see Winter Guard get set up, we might see Alpha Flight get set up. Um not entirely sure how well or how much they'd look at Japan, but they could set up some sort of a Big Hero 6 thing there. Um, Big Hero 6 is actually a Marvel property. Um, it's just that Disney owns them and they were able to turn that into a kids movie. Um, but yeah, I think it'd be really cool to see um, an Asian Avengers as well, something based in Asia somewhere. Um, Big Hero 6 is specifically supposed to be Japan's, um, and one of their characters is the X-Men Sunfire. In case you wanted to keep the Tadashi's alive, Tadashi's here theory going, um, yes, I, I do believe that as well. The fire was in a science lab where they then pulled all of their projects to make their superhero equipment. Flames plus chemicals equals fire powers, right? Um, give him, um, you know, amnesia or something, and you've essentially just pulled the the Burning Man plot from from Arrow. But what kids watched Arrow and is going to criticise that? Um, so I know I could see it happening. Um, and then they could just essentially make Tadashi be Sunfire in that movie. Um, but again, it would be interesting to see if they would then link that to the MCU. It's unlikely. Highly unlikely. But, um, but yeah. Um, and then of course there's uh, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, um, which we could... We could tie to Iron Fist and uh, Luke Cage and, and, the, and the Defenders and stuff because he does at one point join the Heroes for Hire. Um, and I think the Heroes for Hire would be cool as like some street level protection for the Avengers are sort of, you know, so while these guys are taking care of like crime, these guys can worry about villains. Um, Think that'd be really cool to sort of layer the earth like that um you know you'd have your your avengers off avenging your heroes for hire protecting the streets and keeping home safe while the avengers are away fighting the big bad um and then eventually you'd have you know your x-men your fantastic four your avengers your heroes for hire your guardians your we might bring in humans in. You could see the Eternals as a team. Like, the culmination for whatever this is gonna be is gonna make Infinity War an endgame. 
look how those two movies made the original Avengers look. Um, pretty basic by comparison. Um, the other thing that I saw was that they could um, go with, and I am really excited for this idea, uh, they could go with the Avengers Forever plotline for whatever the culmination is. Essentially in that Rick Jones gets the ability to call any Avenger from any time back to the present in order to fight whatever the big bad is. Um, now if the big bad is Kang the Conqueror who already deals with time, um, then that would just, that would just make sense. Um, but we could also just see that as being like, Kang goes back in time and fights the original Avengers and when and that doesn't succeed, you know, when that doesn't su um, succeed, he goes forward in time to try and, like, get them when they're weaker, or when certain characters have left and try to destroy them there, um, knowing that it doesn't matter that he didn't kill them in the past, because he knows that they're inevitably going to die at his hand anyway. Um, and I think that'd be really cool, except that I also want Rick Jones to also have his A-bomb persona by that point. Um, because I think that'd be really cool. Um, however, it's more likely that we'll get um, Amadeus Cho because his mother's actually made an appearance. Whereas Rick Jones has only been referenced by name in the opening credits of 2008's Hulk movie and then not mentioned since. So it's unlikely that Rick Jones will get get brought in as, as a Hulk character. But seeing him be able to do his Avengers Forever thing could also be really cool. Um, and maybe that could happen in whatever the next Hulk movie is when we actually get to see the, the leader. Um, unless that happens to be in She-Hulk, which I'd be okay with that too. I just I want that storyline to be fulfilled as well. Um, but, yeah. Um, and that's, that's my thoughts on the uh, Marvel Cinematic Multiverse now. Um, I mean, it's always kind of been a multiverse because they've got the tie-in comics, there's movie tie-in video games, so like it does go across mediums. It is a bit, in that sense, it is a bit of a, a, a multiverse. Um, so, yeah, um, but let me know what you think in the comments down below, um, we've also recently gotten a teaser trailer for Shang-Chi, I will link the official one below of Marvel Entertainment's actual YouTube, uh, that'll be down below as well if you want to check that out, it is, I can't wait, uh, it says this fall, um, uh, but in Australia, that means spring so that's i think it's the sept is that september or november's it might be november's movie um actually no it is november's movie because spider-man's in december um but yeah that's that's something to look forward to and i'm i'm really excited um so yeah um but that's, that's all I've got for this video, so if you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you're new here and ring the notification bell if you want to be notified when I upload new videos. Um, again, uh, the links will be down below. Um, and yeah, until next time, get your head screwed on.